Okay, thank you very much for the invitation first. Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, dynamics. So what is it uh, that I'm studying uh, today? So we are studying a uh, map from a productive space to a productive space to itself, uh, which is a, a regular map. So it means that essentially, if you want to consider it on a complex uh, perspective, it's a holomorphic map. So it means that two uh, tuple Z0, ZK, you associate uh, P1 of Z0, ZK, or P0 of Z0, ZK, etc. PK of Z0, uh, ZK. And uh, the PIs, uh, they are homogeneous uh, polynomial uh, with the same degree. And uh, so the degree has to be two. So we'll see in a minute why at least two. And we require that it's really a mapping. It's not a, a rational mapping. So the intersection of the PI is zero uh, is reduced to zero. Okay. So this is uh, the kind of object we are studying. So what are we studying? We are studying the dynamics. So what is the dynamics? of the map F. It's the study of its orbit. So you study the sequence of iterates of a, of a given point. Here, uh, Z is any given point in your productive space. And uh, F to the N is F that you compose N times. So the aim here, is to describe the sequence. And its dependence uh, to Z. So it's a quite simple question, actually. You just want to understand uh, if you can describe completely the sequence uh, Fn of Z, uh, just knowing F and Z. So unfortunately, the, the dynamical system uh, in question is chaotic. So you cannot expect to do that uh, explicitly. And so you have to focus on, on different questions, uh, maybe a little less precise or uh, questions of uh, measurable nature, for example. So one simpler question that you can ask is, uh, can, can I say where are the periodic points? So what is a periodic point? So you would say that Z is periodic if, so there exists an integer for which the orbit comes back to Z after a certain time, okay? And the minimal N uh, satisfying this property is the period of Z. Okay, so first question that you could ask uh, is uh, you can try to understand uh, how are such points distributed? How are periodic points distributed? So distributed can be understood in many ways, okay? So here I'm, I'm gonna give uh, three different answers in three different contexts. Okay. So here we are over C, okay? But it doesn't change everything, but okay. Uh, you can ask how they are distributed in the Euclidean topology. So what is their closure? So Euclidean one. So you can make a small variation of this question, but which actually is not a, that small variation. What is the closure in the Zariski topology? Okay. And uh, in the sense of measures. So we are going to make 
this question a little more precise. So what do I mean by that? Um, you can divide by, you can look at the measure one over D to the N times K sum of direct masses at points which have period dividing N. And you can wonder if this measure converges, this sequence converges, and uh, to what object? Okay. So these three questions are related, actually. I'm not going to discuss uh, it very precisely, but there is a, an answer to question three. Um, so there exists a, me a probability measure. We generally denote by mu sub f, such that the following holds. So the first thing is that mu sub f uh, does not give mass to uh, Zariski closed subsets. of pk of c. So if you take a sub variety, it has measure zero for this measure. And the second important information is that one over d to the nk sum of direct masses at those points converges to this measure. Yeah. OK, in the, in the weak sense of measures. So what does it mean? It means that for all phi, which is uh, uh, continuous with compact support pk of c, then uh, the average of the values of the function phi uh, on those periodic points converges to the integral of this function phi against this probability measure. Okay, so, um, so okay, I forgot to mention that this is uh, an important result by Jean-Yves Brien and Julien Duval in 2000, okay? And uh, whenever uh, F is defined over a number field, um, there exists uh, a proof which is based on arithmetic equidistribution statement by Xinji Yuan. And it's uh, more recent, it's 2008. Okay. So why uh, this question is related to the two previous ones? Uh, so because I mentioned that uh, this measure does not give mass to the key closed subsets. So in particular, uh, those points cannot be contained in a Zariski closed subset. Okay, so this implies that uh, periodic points are Zariski dots. Okay, this is always the case. Okay, so we have an answer to question two. Okay, this is the first thing. And this also gives an answer to uh, question one, which is that uh, the cluster, so the, the accumulation set, not only the closure, but the accumulation locus of uh, periodic points, in the Euclidean topology is the support of this measure. So they may not be in the support of this measure, but they cannot accumulate somewhere else. Okay. So this gives a very 
fast and, and very unprecise description of what is known in this setting. And uh, now I, I want to, to give you, a, it was a, a kind of appetizer to what is going to uh, be uh, the, the main topic of interest here uh, that I will focus on. So here we're going to study things in parameter spaces. of uh, endomorphisms of PK. OK, so what is the context? So we are studying families of maps. And the idea is to try to give uh, some equivalent statement to this one, uh, either in a, a fiber space on which your family will act, or directly in parameter spaces of such families. Okay, so what is a family then of, uh, of such endomorphisms? So it will be a map from here, a quasi-projective variety. Uh, times PK to the same quasi-projective variety times PK. And it will be a map which is uh, fibered, which to lambda z maps lambda f lambda of z and f lambda has degree d. Okay. So what will play the role of our periodic points um, in the the parameter spaces? they will be uh, what we call post-critically finite parameters. So before uh, that, I need to define what is the critical set. So what is the critical set of a parameter F sub lambda? It will be the set of points in PK such that the determinant of the differential is zero. So this is the set of points where your map is not locally invertible. And we will say that the parameter lambda is PCF for post-critically finite. If, so it's a dynamical condition. So, uh, so if you look at the union of the images of this critical set, uh, this is algebraic. So a priori, this set um, is just uh, a countable union of hypersurfaces. And you impose that it's not a countable union, but just a finite union of hypersurfaces. OK. So this is, um, so. This is equivalent. So lambda in lambda is equivalent to the fact that, in fact, uh, there are, oh, K is already taken, I think, no? Yeah. There are integers, M and M, such that the critical set of F lambda is contained, the nth image is contained in the nth image, okay? So in some sense, you impose that uh, your sub the, your critical set, which is a sub variety is preperiodic. This is what you impose as parameter. So we have many reasons to, to, to have uh, those parameters to be considered um, as the equivalent ones in parameter spaces to periodic points. So there is one simple case where we can describe quite precisely what happens. So this is a case that you may have encountered in your life without knowing it. Um, so this is the family. So this is a family of one dimensional polynomials, which is uh, of the form 
f lambda of z is z squared plus lambda. And lambda lives in the affine line. Uh, whatever is the field you want to consider. OK. And here, what is the critical set of f lambda? So this is the place where the critical point, uh, the derivative vanishes. So here you have 0 and infinity. So for a polynomial, infinity is always a fixed point. So there is no real condition here. But the condition is that, uh, OK, lambda is post-critically finite if and only if there exist integers such that f lambda m of 0 is f lambda n of zero. So these are the parameters for which zero is pre-periodic. Okay. So here, same question. So same question, meaning that I want to understand um, how are PCF parameters distributed. So this is my motivation for what's coming next. OK. So again, you have uh, in the Euclidean topology, um, in the Zariski topology, and uh, in the sense of measures. So what is the main, uh, so we know the answer to all of these three questions. And what is the main object that we need to, to define to study this? Um, this is the Mandelbrot set. So this is the set of, so here again, over C. You, you could do it over any uh, complete algebraically closed field. It could be non Archimedean. Yeah. Okay, the geometric picture will be different, but the answer will be somehow similar. Okay, take the set uh, of complex parameters uh, for which uh, the orbit of zero at this precise parameter is bounded in C. Okay, this is the Mandelbrot set. Okay, so it's a it's a complicated set. It's a fractal set. Uh, its boundary has out of dimension two. So it's not very easy to draw, but let me try to do a, a rough picture. Okay, so there is a main cardioid. Here, and you have, a, you have kind of don't write uh, decorations everywhere coming around. Okay, and you have small copies of itself everywhere. So the Mandelbrot set is this set that you have uh, filled in. Okay. Uh, all the interior, it's a full set. Okay, so the answer here um, is quite precise, actually. So again, uh, PCF parameters are Darisky dance. So this is the main thing which will uh, uh, in, be uh, of interest for me later. Um, okay. And uh, so what is the Euclidean closure of PCF parameters? So actually, you see, uh, inside uh, the Mandelbrot set, this sequence, it defines, so it defines a sequence of holomorphic functions. So this defines a sequence of holomorphic functions of the parameter. And uh, 
inside the Mandelbrot set, so in the interior, they form a normal family. So it's equicontinuous, so up to extraction, uh, everyone converges. Outside the Mandelbrot set, here, uh, the sequence diverges to infinity, locally uniformly also. So where can we have a different type of, uh, of behaviors? Uh, it's exactly at the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. And so in the Euclidean topology, um, you can say that PCF parameters accumulate exactly on the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. Okay. It's a simple application of Montel theorem to see that. Okay. And I will give an answer to question three. Again, so for question three, um, if you look at this measure, okay, now let me give a more precise answer. So uh, the initial answer is due to Levin in the 90s. And uh, myself and Gabriel Vigny, we gave, uh, I think it's in 2014, we gave a speed of convergence for this which is there exists a constant, at least one, uh, such that for all n bigger than one and for all functions, which is C2 with compact support in C. Um, so one over two to the n minus one. So, um, so you look at the average um, at parameters lambda for which zero is n periodic. So it's really the equivalent of periodic points, is periodic parameters. And uh, you compare it to uh, what is uh, what can be described in several ways, but you can compare it to uh, the equilibrium measure of in the in the potential sense of the model board set. So it's less than uh, this constant, n over two to the n, and you have the C2 norm of phi, which is getting out. Okay. So it converges and it converges fast to this measure. Okay. So what about uh, other families? Is it okay? So let's stick to the uh, case where maps act on P1. In this case, there is a, a big literature on this question. Um, and uh, one uh, family which has been uh, studied a lot is uh, the moduli space of those uh, of those rational maps. <clears throat> so it's the equivalent of the moduli space of curves of a given genus. So you want to study those objects here. You want to study those objects, but uh, up to isomorphism. And you want to study how they deform up to isomorphism. Here, the isomorphism is not just uh, an isomorphism between P1 and P1 because, well, there is just one complex structure on P1, uh, but rather uh, isomorphisms which conjugate your maps. Okay, so there is a natural action on the space of maps from P1 to P1, uh, which all have degree D uh, equals D uh, by PGL of two there. And the action is that it conjugates your map. So this is the action that you that you get. Okay, so actually this is a, a good quotient. This is a geometric quotient and this is a fine moduli space. So 
So really exactly as in the case of, uh, of curves. And in this family, the answer um, to the same three questions, the answers are, are known. And so uh, there is a theorem that you can attribute to many people. Um, so DeMarco gave a simple proof of the Zariski density of PCF parameters. And uh, myself and Gabriel Vini will prove the convergence in the sense of measures. Okay. And, uh, oh, and there is Yusuke Okuyama also. Okay, Okuyama Vini. Okay, so what is the theorem is that um, PCF parameters are the risky dense in this modular space of oh, MD1. Okay, this is the first point. And the second point is that um, so any generic sequence. Um, of finite set of PCF parameters. Oh, okay, let's do Galois invariant finite sets. Uh, converges to what we call the bifurcation measure. Okay. <clears throat> so, in some sense, here again, uh, we have a completely precise uh, description of what could happen. Uh, and, uh, well, th there is no surprise compared to what's going on uh, in, uh, in the space of uh, degree two polynomials. Okay. So then you can ask the a question, which is, uh, what about other families? So, for example, sub varieties of this moduli space. So this is the first question you can ask. And uh, what about when uh, K is larger than one? I'm not going to focus on the first question. So there is a, a beautiful conjecture by Becker and De Marco, uh, which is somehow a, a kind of equivalent to uh, the Andre Earth conjecture, but in this dynamical context. Uh, but it's a very difficult problem, uh, as the Andre Earth conjecture. And um, okay, I solved uh, this conjecture for one parameter families. Uh, when all maps are polynomials with Charles Favre uh, a couple of years ago. And this is essentially the only non-trivial case which is known. Of course, many people were working on the way we, we, we did not do the only uh, uh, contribution. And there are very beautiful uh, contributions by uh, Becker and De Marco, um, and also by uh, Kyoka and uh, Ye. And uh, okay, uh, they also gave a, uh, a variation on this problem with the uh, Nguyen and Krieger, which is uh, very interesting. Okay, but I, I will not spend more time on this problem. So we are now going to focus more on the uh, on the case when we focus when we study dynamics in higher dimension. Okay, so about that. And there is this conjecture by um, Ingram, Ramadas, and Silverman. Mm. Oh, sorry. Ramadas and Silverman. Where they conjecture that uh, PCF maps, PCF parameters, are not Zariski dense. In um, 
this modular space when k is larger than one. Okay, so this is a very different situation. It's okay, there is a complete contrast with this situation, with the previous situation. Okay, so what is the motivation for, for this conjecture? So let's say the philosophic uh, ID. Um, well, assume that the critical set uh, is smooth and irreducible. So if it is smooth and irreducible, and assume that uh, D and K is different from two, two. Then uh, for degree reason, CF is of general type. So it's a, a hypersurface of general type. Oh, sorry. Hmm. So if it is of general type, uh, it has no uh, non-invertible endomorphism. Okay, this implies in particular that. But <clears throat> what if uh, CF is periodic? Meaning that Fn of CF is the critical set. What happened in this case? Well, it has to have a non-invertible endomorphism. It has a non-invertible endomorphism. Fn restricted to CLF. Okay, so, so it's not possible. Okay, uh, so based on this observation and uh, of course making uh, much deeper study uh, using this kind of ideas um, ingram uh, ramadas and silverman proved uh, the following theorem so i think it's in 2019 so ingram ramadas and silverman in 2019 they prove that um, a set of maps such that hmm, um, f j of cf is periodic with j at most two. This is not the risky dance. So this is the first step. However, uh, for each J, you will have to a priori increase the sets of uh, parameters that you authorize. The risky closure may grow uh, each time. So it doesn't guarantee that PCF maps are not the risky maps. OK. So the main theorem here. Uh, so it's a joint work with uh, Johan Tafflin and Gabriel Vigny. So, hmm. 2022, uh, PCF maps are not a risky dance. In uh, this moduli space. Okay. So our strategy is drastically different from the one uh, uh, suggested by uh, Patrick, uh, Roini, and, and Joe. And so, okay, let me say a few words. I see there is a, a hand which is uh, left. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, uh, the above, uh, in the above theorem. Uh... Yes. In the above theorem, uh, in the previous theorem, f is a function on uh, pika or uh, f, uh, and what is the parameter space? Here, uh, in this one? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's so yeah, it's okay. The class it's is a polynomial map. On no, no, PK. It's, it's a map from a PK to PK. It's just an endomorphism. So you take all the space of all endomorphisms uh, up to conjugacy. All so endomorphisms of K of a given degree D. So where is the parameter space? What is the problem in this case? So the parameter space here in is again the same guy. MDK. It's this parameter space, but you the only so they say that if you look at parameters for which either the critical set is periodic, or its first image is periodic, or its second image is periodic, then this set is not uh, Zariski dense. This is what they prove. Is it more clear? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you for the, for the question. Okay, so the, the strategy is drastically different. Um, and, and I must say that one of the motivations, the initial motivations for the strategy uh, was uh, for, for myself, the study of a series of paper by uh, uh, Xiang Gao and uh, Philip Habegger um, about families of Habelian varieties uh, and uh, uniform uh, Bogomolov type statements in these, uh, in these families. So this, this one, one of the motivations uh, for the strategy, it was not not necessarily aimed at the starting point at uh, proving uh, this kind of results. Okay, so this is where we are essentially now. So the strategy is to uh, uh, use again a, a bifurcation measure uh, to give a fundamental height inequality. Uh, in the spirit of the work of uh, Gao and Abega and Dimitrov Gao Abega. Um, so this is the first step to use. Okay, I, I may describe a little uh, more precisely what, what I mean by that. Um, the second uh, is to use uh, an arithmetic equidistribution result. Okay, on quasi-projective varieties. Um, okay, here it's uh, under the assumption so that uh, uh, PCF is the risky dance. Okay, I have to make the hypothesis that there are the risky dance for them to equidistribute. And the third step has nothing to do with that. It's a step which comes from a complex dynamics is to say, well, this actually cannot happen. Okay, so the third step is to uh, uh, build um, Narkim, um, Euclidean. open set U, which is non-empty, which is contained in the support of this measure. And uh, which contains no PCF parameters. Okay. So if your PCF parameters equidistribute this measure, so if they equidistribute the measure mu, in particular, um, they accumulate on the support. However, if you have an open set, which is contained there, which contains no PCF maps, you have a contradiction. So this will give you the, the, the contradiction. Um, so what is the, uh, the ingredient uh, uh, I want to focus on now for the the remaining time is uh, how we obtain the fundamental height inequality. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay, so first we have to define what is the bifurcation measure. And why does why is it non-vanishing? So the non-vanishing could be seen as a consequence of this uh, number three. So let's let's keep it as a as a black box. Okay. So the bifurcation measure, um, it's let's let me describe it in a in a simple in a simple context. Um, and let's say there is a, a good adaptation of that. So I assume you have a a family of abelian varieties. So a family of abelian varieties. <clears throat> of a given base. Um, always of a C. Okay. Uh, you have on A, you have a beta foliation. Okay, and uh, it carries a natural form, differential form. And uh, this differential form is, so it carries a natural form. Um, I like to write uh, as T to the K. So this is a form which uh, in, in your family, so you have your family of abelian varieties here. You have your fibers, uh, your base. If you look at uh, the base, the uh, base point B, you look at the fiber. This it restricts there as um, the uh, R measure. So now you pick um, here, it's uh, hypersurface. In the case of hypersurfaces, it's a little simpler to, to, to define, but well, it doesn't make a big difference, uh, which projects surjectively, so you can assume it's flat. And um, let's call it, uh, I don't know, H. Then, you can look at the restriction of this guy to H, and you can push it down to B. So it's an object. It's a um, object on B. So it's a one-one. Here it's a one-one form on B. Okay, and the bifurcation. So let's call it the the current T associated to H will be this guy. So the measure mu sub H will be uh, T sub H that you take. So dimension of B times. Okay. So there, in this context, there is a, a condition of non-degeneracy I don't know who introduced it, but uh, I'm sure I saw it in Philip's papers and uh, in subsequent papers. And this is equivalent to, uh, so this is a condition which will give you a height inequality, and this is equivalent to the non-vanishing of this guy in this context. Okay. So, here, instead, uh, in, in coming back to the dynamical context, um, instead of having here a family of abelian varieties, you have, uh, so, you know, space times PK. And uh, here, instead of having a smooth object, you have something which is somehow um, uh, glued new F lambdas, so which is the fibered green measure of this guy. 
So in each fiber, you have an object, a global object, which is restricted to each fiber gives you this measure uh, mu sub f lambda. Okay, and you can do the same construction here. It will give you the bifurcation measure. If you look at, if you replace here H with um, the critical set of your full family okay. instead. Okay, this is the object. And so the claim, which I will not uh, spend time on it, is that the measure is non zero in our context. Okay. Okay, so now what do I call uh, the fundamental height inequality? So it's not my naming of it. Um, when you have uh, an endomorphism of PK, uh, which is defined of a Q bar, you can define its canonical height. How do you do it? You look at Tate's argument, you take the limit of one over D to the N, here is the naive height. So it's the height associated to uh, O of one uh, with the standard metrization. And you compose it with F to the N. So what is the, so it's a height function on PK of Q bar with uh, non-negative real values. And it has some invariance property that if you pre-compose by F, you just multiply it by D. And uh, um, functorial uh, properties of the height machine tells you that actually uh, it, it diff differs from the naive height by just a, a bounded function. Okay, and these two properties characterize your height. Okay, so these two properties characterize uh, the function which happens. Okay. Okay, I don't have much time. So here, what is the fundamental height inequality? The fundamental inequality is that um, so there exists an open set in well okay let me be a little more precise so take a family lambda to pk times pk lambda times pk defined of a q bar and you look at which would be the set of uh, lambda z such that lambda is in uh, l sorry z is in the critical set lambda of f lambda and so this is a sub variety of lambda times pk and so there exists u in this um, variety which is Open and Zaisky downs. Um, such that, oh, and then there exists a constant also. There exists two constants one positive and the other one real. Such that for all Z. In U, for all lambda z in U, sorry, the canonical height of f lambda at z is bounded by this constant naive height of lambda minus this constant. So this is any ample height on lambda. Oh, define a cuba. Okay, so in recent breakthrough in in our, uh, arithmetic geometry, um, in family in okay, 
about uniformity uh, results in arithmetic geometry, uh, it appeared to me that this was uh, one of the important ingredients. So the methods used uh, in, in, uh, in geometry were uh, really relying on the geometric structure and the group structure of the abelian variety here. Um, the idea is to replace these arguments by complex dynamical arguments. So for example, what we are going able to do is to give uh, an idea of what could be the constant C1. It depends uh, only uh, on the volume of this uh, uh, bifurcation measure uh, on the moduli space. Okay, for example, you can have a complete explicit description of it and uh, the approach is to go through complex dynamical arguments to 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 prove this kind of uh, inequality okay uh, am i running out of time or uh, could i should i stop yeah you have a few more minutes it's okay a few more minutes okay thank you okay so then um there is the question of uh, equidistribution arithmetic equidistribution so there is this beautiful result by uh, Xin Yi Yuan, uh, which is uh, back to, to the to 2008. Um, there is an equidistribution, general arithmetic equidistribution result, uh, which is on projective varieties. Okay. And recently there has been uh, progresses um, on the topic. Um, so maybe I, I will forget someone, but I hope not. Uh, so Kuhne and uh, Yuan and Zhang uh, gave uh, a general, uh, so here it's on families of abelian varieties. And here it's a general uh, equidistribution result. On a quasi projective variety. Okay, so um, in both cases, so in Kuna's case, uh, this type of, of inequality appeared to be uh, really oh, the keystone. Um, Yuan and Zhang have a very beautiful theory about uh, adelic line bundles of quasi-projective varieties. Um, however, I'm not really confident with that, uh, with that machinery. So I cooked up uh, by myself uh, another result, um, which is of the same flavor. Uh, and uh, again, for which I can rely only on complex analytic arguments for most of the part of the proof. Of course, you have to do some geometry at some point, but uh, okay. M my aim uh, in all this was to have a quite consistent uh, approach uh, at every step that this measure by the bifurcation measure will play the key role uh, at each of the three steps of the proof. Okay, and as a conclusion, what I can say is that uh, in my title, there was this uh, uniformity uh, uh, question. So uniformity, uh, it's meant in the sense uh, uh, of the result of, of Kuhn, for example, uh, which is that, well, once you have your open set, uh, which contains no uh, PCF maps. The question, uh, the natural question is that there exists uh, uh, an upper bound uh, on the number of pre-periodic points in the critical set, such that for all class in this open set, um, the cardinality of the critical set intersected with pre-periodic points of F is bounded by this constant. So hopefully we will manage to reach that at some point. Um, however, uh, in Kuhner's strategy, and I think also in uh, Philippe and Young's strategy, uh, 
one of the key points is that you have a group structure. It, it's that your family of abelian varieties, it's a, it's a group scheme. So it's one of the important uh, thing they use, which you don't have here. So you cannot use it. So instead you have to push a little further the techniques uh, from complex dynamics to guarantee that you have a height gap. Okay. So we managed to do that in some cases for now. Uh, for example, maps, if you take maps, uh, all your maps in your family are from P2 to P2 and uh, uh, have uh, the line at infinity, which is totally invariant. So essentially polynomial mapping of the affine plane, which extend holomorphically to P2. Uh, and then, well, use, uh, again, pluripotential theory to conclude. So, but here there is a, still a lot of work to be done. And so I think I'm gonna stop there. Thank you very much for your attention.